sun, and the sun was blazing hot. Lost, parched, a dusty, dry, swollen thirst. Lost and alone, alone, and lost. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. An oasis. Shade. Glorious shade. A water hole. Right where the river turned back on itself. I fell to my knees and crashed face forward into the drink. Champagne. Soothing away the blisters. That was a hundred years ago. Freak, sweet as honey. That'll put some colour in your feathers. Some paradise in your parrot. It's luck with having found a few stale tea leaves flat in my swag. So I pulled together some dry twigs of kindling, threw a match to it. I lay on my back, staring up through the trees, humming, thinking about food, contemplating sex. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a picture of innocence there on the other side, taking a drink, eyes oh, glistening, magic. Made me remember how intricate and delicate the world really is. Can you feel it? It follows me round. Hear it inside the creaking of the boughs. Takes a slight tang on the edge of the breeze. It was there a hundred years ago, oiling its way through the undergrowth. Poisonous vapour, an evil thing, overtaking the pond. Sharp, like sherbet in the bridge of my nose, then climbing through my bones like a rat. Everything started to glitter, then go dark and furry. I felt hunger surge up from my gut with a blunt knife. I find I'm stalking it with some ancient trumpet singing through my veins, my scalp tingling on fire. My eyes, tiny pinpricks, staring down a long tunnel with everything on the outside of the creature unfocused and fuzzy. She could sense me. Eyes darting back and forth. Nostrils flared, its haunches puffing like a bellows. It was as if every living thing other than myself knew that a murder was about to take place. First they all went quiet. The frogs, cockatoos, even the crows. But as I moved in for the kill, frenzy took the tiny forest. Strange music. I thought I could hear human voices in it, but not like a choir. More like a million beer swilling drunks, all singing the same words, the same song, but all in different keys. I slid my knife from the scabbard, and in one movement, I struck. I struck again. It made a sickening, wounded noise. It was strange. Disappointed rut. In the flurry of trips and toppled forward, and found myself hugging it like an injured child, trying to help it, trying to undo the crime, trying to shut it up. As I did, the crows exploded and began pecking at one another, vicious bastards. One swooped down and plucked out a, a living eye. A living eye. Somehow this cold-blooded act brought me to my senses for a second. The crows were above, squawking and fighting over their prize. The very thing I'd been admiring only seconds before. I'd opened the door to a furnace, and an overpowering blast of molten guilt shot over me in a whoosh. 
everything struck at once. Shy, victory, greed, contrition. <coughs> but there was a beast chuckling in my gut, clamoring to be fed. I stopped. I slowly looked about. Quickly I butchered the baby lamb. I sliced a chunk of flesh from its rump and ate it raw and bloody. Revulsion. Revulsion kicked me down like a cur. I was on all fours, stuffing this blooded carcass into a bag. The campfire whined, and above the sound of the water, spitting and splattering as it splashed over onto the hot coals, I heard the angry drumming. Mounds of dark earth and tufts of grass exploded under the hoof of four horsemen galloping at full clip. They were upon me, nowhere to run, covered in the blood of the lamb. There of all fools. I could feel their disgust, their contempt, their air of superiority. I held my ground, literally. Up came the squatter, mounted on his thoroughbred. Up came the troopers. One, two, three. Hmm. Where's that jolly John Buck? You've got in your tucker bag. You'll come along, said Matilda, with me. <laughs> then the three cops join in with the landowner, and the speakers in one voice, over and over, they keep saying, Waltz and Matilda, Waltz and Matilda, you'll come along, said Matilda, with me. I knew I'd been caught red handed. Well, was truly a shame of the bloodlust that had overpowered me. I made up my mind there and then I'd never kill another living thing as long as I lived. But I couldn't get a word in edgeways. Waltz <laughs> and Matilda, bloody Waltz and Matilda. Arm and arm and kicking their leg. <laughs> what did it mean, anyway? <laughs> You'll come a Waltz and Matilda with me. Waltz Out here? <laughs> and who the fuck's name's Matilda? I couldn't take it anymore. So I jumped up and I yelled, you'll never take me alive, said me. <laughs> so I up and I ran and I dived into the billabong. Who come a Waltz and Matilda with me? Waltz and Matilda? Waltz and Matilda? Who come a Waltz and Matilda with me? And my voice can be heard if you camp out, boy, the bill of bond. He'll come a waltzing. Matilda, with me. <laughs> <laughs>